This picture reminds me of a lot of the things that I love about life in general. Um, the adventure, going to wild places, going climbing with friends and family, traveling all over the world. And, you know, in cases when I'm giving this talk for people who aren't climbers, it doesn't seem maybe like it fits totally. But I think when you look at the work that I do, there's a real connection between my interest in being outside and going climbing and finding these beautiful places and the work that I do so much right now, which is really creating these venues for life. And in this particular case, we're gonna be talking about climbing facilities specifically, but these venues really are anywhere where we're combining work, play, uh, and community or family. Really, it's just those key aspects that I think is really what we're investigating here to create these venues for life that combine those things in a meaningful way. Um, they're really places that we grow, they're places that we evolve as people, and we get to do this together. And so, really this isn't a talk about how to be doing anything, it's really just a talk about the different ways that I think about putting these facilities together. And I really wanted to be starting with a thank you. And the reason why is because I have a lot of gratitude for being here. I'm really thankful for climbing and what it has done for me personally. And I'm really very thankful to be able to be here to help everybody who's watching or listening to this video. And when I look back at the last you know, 25, 27 years of my life, going back to when I was a 15 year old, I was this, you know, barely five feet tall, less than 100 pounds kid in high school. I was in special needs classes, you know, being told that I, I wasn't able to keep up with my peers, both physically and even, you know, in typical school. And I really, you know, found climbing at a point when I was this 15 year old. And it was this immediate way for me to dig into something you know it it suited me it immediately was something i was very comfortable doing and i just really went into it very very deeply and it took me out to colorado where i did my undergraduate work and also was very fortunate to be exposed to architecture and i completely fell in love with architecture and so in the early 2000s i started really getting into my work in college and starting to thrive really for the first time ever uh, in an in a academic setting. And as I was also climbing a lot, I was competing. I finished uh, top 10 in nationals one year and got absolutely smoked by other professionals like Chris Sharma, among others. And, you know, it was pretty obvious to me that they were at a level, even though I was climbing pretty well, they were at a level that was a step or two or even three beyond where I was at. And I ended up having a climbing accident where I broke my arm climbing in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. And it ended up really sort of getting me to start thinking about graduate school. And, you know, would I want to go back to school and pursue architecture at a higher level? And that's when I ended up moving back to Boston to go to Harvard. And, you know, looking back 10 years before that, at a time when I was in, you know, classes that were very remedial, this seemed like an opportunity that was worth taking. And so, you know, it's the sort of irony of life. So much of it for me personally has had to do with just when I get really inspired by something, it tends to lead to better results. And so, you know, both climbing and architecture have really given that to me. And that's part of why I'm so grateful is because I don't really know where I would be if it wasn't for finding these things to really sort of dig into entirely. And so, you know, climbing has taught me so much about life in general. And this, the reason I have this sort of uh, resume up is because it keeps coming back to being the center of my life. And so, you know, after graduate school, I got back into climbing again. Um, I started climbing pretty well for a guy in his 30s. And, you know, I ended up actually having a reconstructive shoulder surgery. And so even more recently, coming back to climbing again, now with a repaired shoulder, now with two little beautiful girls, climbing once again is an entirely different thing for me. And now being able to work independently after doing development for Brooklyn Boulders for almost a decade and being able to work independently with different 
uh, gym owners has been fantastic. And so climbing continues to be the central aspect of really my entire life. And I'm just so happy to be able to uh, work in this venue and be sharing my you know, experience with you, hopefully to help you uh, have successful projects. And so that's really what these venues are, are really intended to be. And you know, when I first started uh, climbing outside in Colorado, you know, I'd already been climbing quite a bit and it really was about, you know, how hard can I start climbing and where can I go, you know, traveling, finding these beautiful places, these beautiful boulders or whatever they are. And, you know, really quickly I started designing climbing gyms. Um, this was the end of college and my first job really after college for about three or four years in the early 2000s, designing climbing walls for the Eldorado Wall Company. As I went back to graduate school and started doing other architectural work, um, you know, different commercial projects, aquariums, and you know, law schools, and even prefabricated housing. And one thing I learned about really quickly was I had a very strong connection to actual construction. You know, I got into architecture to be building things, and that's not the case for everybody. And so, you know, I like doing prefabricated work because we had a very direct connection with the people who were building in our own factory. And the problem that we were designing wasn't just the final image, it was the whole process. How do we design, engineer, manufacture, ship, install, and then live in the house itself? And so that sort of thinking, I think, really has led into the development work that I was doing for Brooklyn Boulders, where this is the final image, but really in terms of project development, it's really about taking a sketch, like the very earliest ideas that we have, taking that, figuring out what the, like the key goals are, what we're really trying to do here, developing that into a bit more detail as we have more information, and then just continuing to develop it over time so that we end up with visualizations and modeling that becomes the script or the rough draft of the project as it develops further with a much larger team. And that's really what I'm doing today as well. And so this talk really isn't necessarily how to be doing anything, it's really how to be thinking about it. And the reason that that's so critical is because this has so much to do with the mindset that we are all bringing into this process. It has everything to do with your own experiences, your own preferences, my own experience and preferences, and then really importantly, figuring out what your intentions are. You know, without knowing what your intentions are, what your goals are, I can't really give you very much. I can certainly come up with things, but really a lot of the innovation comes from that back and forth between you as the client and me. And so we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but the drawings that we're making are just the result of the process that we go through together to take an idea, to take a dream, and really evolve that into something that's a physical space. And so again, this isn't really, you know, ironically how to, it's because it's, it's really about how to think about it because so much of this is really a response to you. It's really that back and forth. And that's why this is a series of Einstein quotes where he talks a lot about you know, not being the smartest guy. He's talking about how education is learning, um, not necessarily learning facts, but learning how to learn really and how to think. And so I certainly learned that when I was in college where just having some people set up the, the situation for me to dig in and for me to be learning, that was the thing that transformed my whole life. It wasn't being told what to do. It was about understanding the way that we can be thinking about things, understanding how other people think about things, and then taking bits and pieces of that to sort of figure out what works for me. And that's definitely how I go about when I teach college classes, which I've been doing for a while now. And it really, because I can't be force feeding information to anybody, I'm not really interested in that either. But what I am interested in, just like, again, Einstein here, talking about how explaining things simply, because that really shows a true understanding. Because if you can't explain it in a relatively simple way, like most things should be able to be boiled down that way. 
And there's a really important distinction with, you know, there are very specific terms and words and ideas, but in general, you know, the narrative and the explanation that we have, whether it's for your business model or for the design itself, that's really important. And this is one of the things that we talk a lot about um, as we keep going forward is, is being able to narrate your intentions because by being able to narrate your intentions, it shows that you understand what you're actually trying to do. And when Einstein talks about the idea of being a genius, he's not saying that he's a genius ever. He's talking about how he basically is like a child. He's thinking like a child even as an adult and that most adults stop thinking like children. And the reason why this is important in a world where you are actually trying to come up with something new or new ideas or in our case, new ways of making facilities, it's because imagination doesn't exist. It's not, you're not imagining something that already exists. It's not about going from where you are today to somewhere that you already see. It's about using our imagination to figure something out that's new, to, to chart a new path, not just from A to B, but to wherever our imagination takes us. And that's more ambitious than just sort of following someone else. And so that's why, you know, he talks about imagination being the preview of life's coming attractions, which again, I do think that that's really what we're here to do today, which is to create a situation where we're imagining things together that probably don't exist yet, but that's really how we get to a goal of making world-class facilities, not just copying something that we've seen somewhere else. And I, I think that's important because I'm not claiming that we're saving lives uh, literally, but I do genuinely think that we are helping people have better lives. And I do think that I can say that genuinely because climbing has done that for me. Climbing has completely changed my life. It is, has been this through sort of path in and out of my life in different aspects for, again, almost 30 years now. And that's really why I'm here to be doing this work is because this isn't just about filling a gap in a market. It's about like inspiring people in a genuine way.